Smoke is rising in the shadows overhead. My glass is almost empty. I read again between the lines upon the page the words of love you sent me. If I could know. Happy just to hold the hands I love on this winter's night with you. my window pane where webs of snow are drifting if I could only have you here to breathe a sigh or two I'd be happy just to hold the hands I love on this winter's night with you Happy just to hold the hands I love on this winter's night with you. I'd be happy just to hold the hands I love on this winter's night with you. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown, where we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person, and where we support each other on our spiritual search for truth and meaning. Welcome to those of you in the room. Hardy souls came out in this cold weather, thank you. And welcome also to those of you joining us from home via YouTube. Christmas doesn't often fall on a Sunday, but how lovely to get to spend the holiday with you. And hi, Mom and Dad. Sorry not to be with you today. I'm with my church family. A really special thank you to our staff members who are here today on this holiday, Mary and Kenneth and also to our safety and tech team volunteers, our choir and our ushers. I also send thanks and a Merry Christmas to our pianist, Brenda. She is home with her father. He is on hospice and today is his birthday. So we hope they are having a lovely Christmas. And she was kind enough to pre-record all of the carols for today that we will be playing to sing along to. So thank you, Brenda. 
I really hope that all of you who are here in person will stay afterwards for our holiday brunch. There's tons of food down there, and we tried to make Acker Bosworth Hall really fun and festive. Please do note that the office will be closed this week until Thursday. Um, we will be having our Zoom coffee hour on Tuesday night, talking about our favorite holiday tradition. So let us know if you need that link. Let's take a moment now to affirm our Meeting House Covenant. I will say a line and then you can say it back to me and it's printed in your order of service as well. Love is the spirit of this Meeting House. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Now, as we light our chalice here in the sanctuary, I invite those of you joining us from home to light a candle wherever you are. In that way, we can feel connected even while we are apart. I'll be reading Fellow Sojourners by Dan Lambert. We gather together on this Christmas day as fellow so sojourners looking for light, for hope, for peace, and for love. We gather as people from many backgrounds, many faiths, many cultures, and many spiritual paths. But as we light this chalice, we gather as one body, looking to the nativity for its message to all of humanity. Its message is that there is light, there is hope, there is peace, there is love. I invite you to rise as you are able to sing our first carol. I saw three ships come sailing in. How perfect for this coastal town on Christmas. And Mary's gonna cue that up for us. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. Pray whither sail those ships all three on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Pray whither sail those ships all three on Christmas Day in the morning. Oh, they sailed into Bethlehem on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Oh, they sailed into Bethlehem on Christmas Day in the morning. And all the bells on earth shall ring on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. And all the souls on earth shall sing on Christmas Day in the morning. Then let us all rejoice and sing on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Then let us all rejoice again on Christmas Day in the morning. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day.
You may be seated. Okay, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> I share our first lesson with you. As Unitarians, we don't always talk about Jesus that much. We don't pray to him either, but we do love to celebrate his birth. We love Christmas and all the ritual and pageantry and storytelling and candlelighting that comes with it. This may seem kind of odd to some people who know that Unitarian Universalists are kind of known for their skepticism and reason-centered religion and not our love of Bible stories. In fact, Reverend Christopher Rabel, who was once the minister at the First Unitarian Church of Worcester, took it upon himself to rewrite one of the famous Christmas carols to more closely match some of the things that many of us actually believe scientifically about Christmas. He called it, God rest ye Unitarians. God rest ye Unitarians, let nothing you dismay. Remember there's no evidence there was a Christmas day. When Christ was born is just not known, no matter what they say. Oh, tidings of reason and fact, reason and fact. Glad tidings of reason and fact. There was no star of Bethlehem, there was no angel's song. There could have been no wise men, for the trip would take too long. The stories in the Bible are historically wrong. Oh, tidings of reason and fact reason and fact, glad tidings of reason and fact. Our current Christmas customs come from Persia and from Greece, from solstice celebrations of the ancient Middle East. We know our so-called holiday is just a pagan feast. Oh, tidings of reason and fact, reason and fact, glad tidings of reason and fact. But as my colleague, Reverend Kristen Grassel Schmidt says, I read a beautiful prayer from her last night. She says, ultimately, the quest to prove or disprove the details of Jesus' birth misses the point. The point of Christmas has never been about facts. Rather, it's about the promise of justice and hope mercy and peace born among us when the whole world and everything in it seems stacked against us. It's about how the mightiest power ever known is born not to kings or presidents or CEOs, but to the people our world ignores and exploits. Christmas is about how love finds a way, no matter how violent and brutal empire's tactics become to try to stamp it out. It's about the good news that love offers, not to the wealthy and the powerful, not to those with adoring fans or millions of Twitter followers, but to all people everywhere, and especially the poor and hungry, those sidelined and forgotten by society. The Reverend Kendall Gibbons writes this about Christmas. Do not underestimate the power of the manger and the hope it holds. The Christmas song of the angels is not as innocent as it sounds. It has turned the whole world upside down before now, and it still can. In the words of David Reese Williams, blessed are we who have heard the Christmas story again and know the power it holds. Blessed are we who can hold on to faith in peace and justice amid present wrong and strife. Blessed are we who can learn to notice how love turns the world upside down, bringing down tyrants, humbling the mighty, so that the hungry can be filled with good things and the lowly be raised up Blessed are we, in whose hearts lives this good news of great joy for all people. 
So let's put aside our skepticism and our fact findings, and let's sing now the original version of God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. Please rise as you are able. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power. Please join me now in a time of meditation and prayer. Oh, he doesn't want to stop. <laughs> As I share our prayer, or at any time during the service, you are welcome to light a silent candle at the table to the right of the pulpit, where there's a journal to record your thoughts and prayers. Our prayer this morning is by Reverend Sarah Wall, Sarah La Wall, and I invite you into a moment of silence at the end of the prayer. Spirit of love, we come together on this sacred day to awaken ourselves, to awaken ourselves to the joy of Christmas to the miracles of life, the birth of a baby, the rise of the sun once more, the magic of this earth, of Mother Nature herself, the love of one another. The Christmas story calls us to remember, to remember that the ordinary can become extraordinary. To remember that any child, our own children, can become great prophets. 
teachers, leaders of nations, saviors even, not of souls, but of lives, working to end the ills and suffering in our world. We give thanks for our many blessings. We are reminded today to share our blessings with as many people as possible, to consider that even the smallest gift, the smallest effort, can make a difference in someone's life, in the world, for this is the season of giving. The Christmas story reminds us that the, the tradition of giving gifts symbolizes divinity. When we give honor the divine in each other, we acknowledge the common link among all of us, the common ancestral bond we all share. We pray for peace, that war may end. We pray for food, that none may go hungry. We pray for forgiveness, that our world may begin to heal. We pray for dignity and worth, respect and love, liberty, justice, and equality for all. The Christmas story reminds us that this moment is precious. This moment is holy. This moment is full of hope and possibility. This moment is all we need. This is our Christmas prayer. Amen. And please, as we continue to hold our many prayers in our hearts, we will now take a collection for the shared ministry of this faith. Those of you watching at home, you can contribute through PayPal or Venmo. Links can be found on our website, uumh.org, and offsite, your contributions will now be gratefully received. Frosty winds make moan. Earth stood still as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In, In the, the bleak, bleak midwinter, Long, long ago. ago Angels and archangels 
must have gathered there. Cherubim and seraphim thronged in the air. But his mother Mary in her maiden bliss worship the beloved with a kiss. What can I give you? Poor as I am If I were a shepherd I would give a lamb And if I were a wise man I would do my part What, what can, can I, I give, give him, him? Give him my heart. In the bleak midwinter, frosty winds make moan. Earth stood still as iron, water like a stone. And snow, snow had, had fallen, fallen snow, snow on snow, snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago. Thank you. I share our second lesson by Jason Cook. My Aunt Lee knew how to put on a Hanukkah buffet. I mean, she really knew how to put on a Hanukkah buffet. There was no doubt. She knew her way around any casserole that had ever tickled humankind's palate. And there was sweet kugel and beef brisket and latkes and rugula and blintzes and on and on. And this buffet would appear at her home during Hanukkah, dishes lined up neatly across the island of an immaculate kitchen that never betrayed a sign that there was any effort that went into the process. There she was, always stylishly dressed in something that shimmered, standing next to my Uncle Al in his corduroy bow tie, that glorious buffet spread out in front of us while the candles flickered on the menorah and the lights twinkled on the Christmas tree. While Jewish, Aunt Lee and Uncle Al embraced the festive sparkle of Christmas decorations too. I took that buffet for granted when I was a little kid, Jason says. I just knew it would be there. The food as familiar as the back of my hand, the taste of each dish forever associated with memories of Hanukkah or Christmas. And no matter how many family members and friends showed up, there was always enough. The buffet never ran out. There was enough food for seconds and thirds. And by the time we were stuffed, the buffet disappeared as easily as it had come, fading into the background. I look back now, he says, and think how this bit of magic that Aunt Lee conjured each Hanukkah was very much in keeping with the Hanukkah story of the lamp and its replenishing oil, that when we think we don't have enough, we still do. But of course, like the Hanukkah story, if I shift the lens I look at Aunt Lee's miraculous everlasting buffet through, I realize that, of course, it wasn't magical at all. 
Aunt Lee made the magic. That neat line of casseroles and silver chafing dishes was the product of much labor that came before. Labor we didn't see or recognize in that moment. And there was always enough because Aunt Lee made sure there was enough. A second or third dish of kugel or more latkes waiting in the wings for whatever hungry holiday traveler might show up. I think for me, he says, that is the lesson of that Hanukkah buffet. Abundance is ours. There is enough for everyone, but only if we are intentional in our sharing of that abundance. Aunt Lee died last year, and Uncle Al is busy playing cards in an assisted living facility these days. But the buffet, it belongs to all of us, and it's the responsibility of all of us to enjoy, to appreciate, to share in all its miraculous, everlasting abundance. Please rise as you're able for our next carol, dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I have a little dreidel, I made it out of clay. When it's dry and ready, my dreidel I will play. Dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Dreidel, 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 with dreidel I shall play. It has a lovely body, with legs so short and thin, when it gets Tired, it drops and then I win. Dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Dreidel, 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 oh dreidel, I win. Sorry, my dreidel's always playful. It loves to dance and spin. A happy game of dreidel. Come play now, let's begin. Dreidel, 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 it loves to dance and spin. Oh, dreidel, 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 come play now, let's begin. I like that verse again, the first verse, one more time. I have a little dreidel, I made it out of clay. When it's dry and ready, with dreidel I shall play. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Oh, dreidel, 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 with dreidel I shall play. Makes me feel like, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And so I'm going to tell the third lesson, the rebirth of the sun. It's from Circle Round by Starhawk and Diane Baker and Ann Hill. 
And uh, we use this with the permission of Bantam Books, Batman Books, a division of Random House. Circle round and I'll tell you a story about when the sun was born. It was the middle of winter and the sun had grown very old. All year long, the sun had worked hard, rising and setting day after day. All year long, the sun had fed everybody on earth, shining and shining, giving energy to trees and the flowers and the grasses so they could grow and feed animals and birds and insects and people. All year, the sun's gravity held tight to the spinning ball of the earth and the twirling ball of the moon and the eight other whirling planets as they traveled around and around and around until the poor sun was dizzy watching it all. Now, the poor, tired sun could barely make it up in the morning and after a very short time, needed to sleep again. So the days grew shorter and the nights, the nights grew longer until the day was so short it was hardly worth getting up for. Night felt sorry for the sun. Come to my arms and rest, child, she said. After all, I am your mother. You were born out of my darkness billions of years ago, and you will return to me when all things end. Let me cradle you now as I shelter every galaxy and star in the universe. So night wrapped her great arms around the sun, and the night was very long indeed. Why does the dark go on so long, asked the children. All over the earth, they said, won't the sun ever come back again? The sun is very tired, said the old ones. But maybe if you children say thank you for all the things the sun does for us, the light may return in the morning. The children sang songs to the sun. They thought about all the things the sun gave them. Thank you for growing the lettuces and the corn and the rice and the wheat. They said thank you for growing trees of the forest and the seaweeds in the oceans and the krill, the krill that feeds the whales. Thank you. Thank you for stirring the air and making winds that bring the rain. Every time a child said thank you, the sun began to feel a little warmer a little brighter, wrapped safely in the arms of night, the sun grew younger and younger. At last, the children had to go to bed. We will stay up and wait for the sun to rise again, the old one said to the children. Can't we stay up too, the children asked. You can try, but you will get too sleepy, the old one said. But you can light a candle, because all fire is a spark of the sun's fire. Put your candle in a very safe place and let it keep vigil for you as you sleep and dream of sunrise. So the children lit their candles and put them in very safe places. And each flame was a little spark of the sun's fire. And the sun peeped out from between the arms of night and saw all the little fires and began to feel warmer and brighter and younger.
early in the morning, the old ones woke the children. Together they climbed a high hill, faced to the east, the direction of sunrise. They sang songs to the sun and run around, ran around trying to keep warm. They waited and waited to see what the dawn would bring. The sky began to turn from black to indigo blue. Slowly the sky grew bright. A golden glow crept over the horizon. Night opened her great arms and in a burst of brightness, the sun appeared, new and strong and shining. For in the long night, the sun had rested well and grown young from the songs and the thanks of the children, young as a brand new baby born out of night once more. Everybody cheered and the children jumped up and down. The sun has returned. The sun is reborn. All the people cried and they danced and sang to celebrate the birth of a new day and then went home to breakfast, as we will do. I invite you to stand as you are able for our next carol, Deck the Hall with Boughs of Holly. Joyfully, deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Toll the ancient Yuletide carol. Fa la 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 la. See the blazing you'll be for us. Fa la 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 la. Strike the harp and join the chorus. Fa la 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 la. Follow me in merry measure. Fa la 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 la. While I tell of Yuletide treasure. Fa la 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 la. Past away the old year passes. Fa la 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 la. Hail the new year, lads and lasses. Fa la 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 la. Sing we joyous all together, fa la 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 la. Warmth of the wind and weather, fa la 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 la. I share lesson number four with you. This is by Lynn Unger. Looking for the Christmas spirit. I suspect that I am far from the only one having a hard time getting in the Christmas spirit these days. It's hard to feel all ho, ho, ho when the news is so full of climate change-induced disasters, white supremacy on display in its most virulent forms, and continued gun violence taking life after life. On the other hand, she says, there is something in my little Jewish Unitarian Universalist heart that is reaching out toward Christmas this year. The story of Mary and Joseph traveling because they had to sign up on a government registry resonates. The story of a couple looking for shelter in their time of greatest need of a fragile king who ordered the slaughter of innocents because he couldn't handle the prospect of a threat to his own power. The story that imagines the nature of the newborn king to be something so different from the despotic Herod that even now we have a hard time imagining what sort of king 
could align himself with the poor and the outcast, insisting that power means something utterly unlike what the crowned kings try to grab and maintain at all costs. I'm not doing so well with Santa Claus or Jingle Bells or presents under the tree, she says. But I might just find my way into Christmas spirit of a little family finding warmth and comfort with the friendly beasts. I'm trying to work my way eventually to the Christmas spirit of the wise men who trusted that there was something out there, although they didn't know exactly what that was worth looking for. Men who didn't really get that this was a totally different kind of king, who brought presents fit for the kind of king they understood, but didn't walk off in disgust and bewilderment when what they had sought for so long turned out to be a baby with the kind of power that babies have, not the power of kings. I don't know that I will get there, she says. But what I am really hoping for, what I am aiming toward, is the Christmas spirit of the shepherds, who have always been my favorite part of the story. Partly because I have always found it hilarious. I mean, really, there are, here are ordinary guys doing the most ordinary things, just out on the job, keeping an eye on what needs to be watched, and suddenly the sky is full of angels? Luke tells us right in the text that they were terrified. And who wouldn't be? It's all completely absurd and unbelievable. And no one in their right mind, which neither the shepherds nor the sheep probably were under circumstances, would have the faintest idea how to respond. Any reasonable person would conclude that the sky was falling and hunker down. But these guys, these plain, extraordinary guys, get their sheep together and go out to look for a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now think about that for a minute. Swaddling clothes are what everybody in those days wrapped their babies in. It's like saying, you will know for a sign when you see a baby wearing a onesie. But these guys were like, okay, sure, fine. Let's go see what they're talking about. And I love that. Also, I'm not quite there yet. But I think maybe that's the Christmas spirit that I'm looking for. The spirit that in the face of terror and confusion is willing to entertain the possibility that wonder could be in the mix as well. The spirit that is willing to be amazed and curious and brave enough to say, let's go see. Even when the instructions aren't very clear and you don't know the road. Let's go see. Let's go see together. Please join me in our last carol of our service. We're going to try to get there together with Jingle Bells.
<laughs> Thank you for being with us today. Those of you watching at home, have a wonderful rest of the day. Those of you here in person, we hope you will join us for brunch downstairs. Merry Christmas, everyone. Go in peace. Happy Christmas, everyone.